Taisha Pagan, and today on Connected, we are going to be discussing near-death experiences. Taisha has had one near-death experience in her life, and um, she is going to tell me about it. Um, she also runs a photography business called Forever Photography and Events by Taisha, and we're also going to touch on that. Um, so Taisha, welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. <laughs> So funny story, Taisha and I met years ago at a little healing center here in St. Pete. Just sort of randomly, you stopped in that night, right? Yes, <laughs> totally random. Yeah, well it was actually really random for me. I was driving by and I saw it and I kind of went rrr, rrr, and I stopped and I was like, wait, what's going on here? So it was a really special center, a really special yes. place that's unfortunately um, not in business anymore. And it's been a few years since Taisha and I have uh, seen each other, but I was so interested in hearing about her story of um, what happened. I've been studying near-death experiences for years. Some people see a tunnel of light. Some people just see darkness. Some people see that their family members come to them to get them. That's actually what happened to my grandmother as she was passing away. She was like cackling and she's like, they're coming to get me. They're coming to get me. And we were all like, oh my gosh. So she definitely saw like people that she knew coming to get her. So I want to start with your experience, and I want to um, I want to really, really kind of dive deep on what happened with you. How old were you? Um, I know that it was a domestic situation. We won't go too much into that. But so you started to black out. Is that correct? Yes. So the incident was quite quickly. It was possibly about 15 seconds within the whole ordeal. And um, basically, I saw my body was getting numb, and I saw black. And but then I saw a strobe light, and I saw pictures of past lives that I couldn't recognize myself in. Mm -hmm. Like I saw several pictures of black and white. I think I saw a few in color, so this, a few in sepia. And um, it was just something that it happened so quickly, but I understood that what was happening I, was inevitable. I, I didn't have time to put into thoughts or think, but I saw what I saw and I remember vividly. Do you remember being scared? I imagine initially you were probably pretty scared, but then was there like a center of calmness after like a few seconds? Um, it, it's it's there's there's a, a lot of fear that goes on when there's someone who's actually trying to asphyxiate you. I don't know if I'm saying this right. And as I was gasping for air, that fear started to feel heavy on my body. It didn't really feel like I was going to panic or my heart was beating faster. It was just started to slow down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But then during the intimate, in the interim of that situation, then the picture started to flash in front of me. So I think for every person, depending on how that experience goes, Mm -hmm. I think that, that that transition may have may would have not been peaceful had that happened. And what did you see in the pictures? I saw uh, just I, I saw characters that I felt like I was connected to. Like I saw people from like I think it, it felt like I was connected to them, either ancestors or myself and other lives that I've possibly lived and that mm -hmm. I've done important things for. Like I saw myself dressed as uh, an indigenous woman with some typical clothing that would either uh, indicative of some high ranking and I don't know, a, like probably a medicine woman? Like a medicine okay. woman or something like that. I can't really remember exactly what she was wearing, but that last image was the one that stood out the most. Okay. That woman. She almost looked like she was from Peru or something. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you've ever seen the characteristics in the dressing this mm -hmm. one. Shans from that era. Oh, 100%. I'm big into Shans. <laughs> yeah, 100%. So that's how she was dressed. And she had two ponytails. Her face was round. So that was the last image that I saw. And then I came back and I breathed. And I was like, okay, what just happened? Mm -hmm. So after that happened, um, I had to collect myself. Um, basically, I, I automatically changed my thought process and I had to get out of that situation, especially mm -hmm. because I had a child and my child doesn't 
deserve to live in that environment where we're constantly fighting. That was just a bad situation at that point, but I'm glad that I was able to, from that point, my life shifted completely. So that gave birth to a lot of opportunities. Did you become spiritual yes. after that? Did you believe in anything prior to? Were you raised religious? Um, did you have any preconceived notions of what should happen in a situation like that? I have, uh, actually, it's interesting because that question, it comes with variables. I grew up religious my entire life. Mm -hmm. So did I. I. It yes. was different religions though. There was not a specific religion that I can say we were consistent with. Oh, so, okay. So, like, for example, I, I visited Pentecostal churches, mm -hmm. I went to Catholic churches, I went to the Evangelist church. I went to more of the Christian side of the different denominations. Mm -hmm. And I learned throughout that process. I also um, have had experiences with family members who practice um, Santeria to my culture. Mm -hmm. it's, Puerto Rican? Yes. Yes, okay. Yes, it's like more it's connected with christianity but it's also like witchcraft but it's the, the, the good witchcraft as far as i'm concerned like white magic like white magic okay. healing um and what's that called it, in spanish it's called santeria okay and uh, basically they have syncretized the african gods with the christian gods and oh, basically neat. yeah the santos or the the uh religious figures from Christianity also translate and we kind of believe in that they do offerings they do mm -hmm. you know, they basically altars. practice altars right okay. they do practice that differently so I, I learned the throughout my journey until that point death to me was a dream it was a different experience I would never like I knew about the story of Jesus and how he reincarnated but mm -hmm. after that experience I kind of felt like we probably do reincarnate at some point. So you felt like that these images of these people mm -hmm. that you were seeing were potentially past lives? Yes. I can possibly feel sure that those people that I saw were me, and there were men and women. So I feel like we do have the ability to embody a woman or a man. Absolutely. I think so too. Yes. I think that that's why sometimes we feel, you know, very, um, masculine in our ways and then sometimes we feel very feminine because we've all been all of the above many 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 times before yes. how did that experience change you it changed were me. you are you more connected now are you more spiritual because you know that there's something else because you've seen a glimmer of it i mean i feel like i feel like there's more a, det uh, a detachment of myself to the idea of death you know it's, i i've always had a different view of death since i saw beetlejuice at the age of three i don't know for some reason that movie changed my life yeah. <laughs> everybody loves beetlejuice everybody, everybody loves beetlejuice, loves beetlejuice. But everybody loves that movie yes but that if you look at right i love that yeah. movie if you look into the concept it's really like the two couple they die and they just stay stuck in the world where they're you know, that you don't transition. Yeah. And so after that, after I, you know, that was my first movie that I said, okay, yeah, I love this concept. I don't know why, for some reason, it, 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 it sparked an interest in me. And I, I, I saw it as a detachment from the reality of how we see life. Mm -hmm. So Well, we're far too serious. Yes. Like, we're far, far too serious that, oh, I need to accomplish this and I need to do that. And, and in that moment, did you think that you needed to have accomplished anything, or were you just like, oh, I just am? Yes, at that moment, I felt that I, that whatever I didn't accomplish at that point was meant to be for that reason, because I understood at some point when I did have my first losses in life, like such as my mother, and things like that, that things happen for a reason, that yeah. yes, we do go through a lot of suffering, but at the same time, if it wasn't for that experience, we wouldn't have this experience. Yeah. So, for example, I always put it in, in, in perspective. When I lost my mother, um, I grew up with my grandparents. They moved to Puerto Rico. I learned the language. I learned the culture. So it was something that I, I had to learn how to accept. You know, that mm -hmm. sometimes we, we 
lose things in life, but we also have to appreciate what comes after. And there's always, you know, a, a, there's always a reason to keep going. How old were you when you lost your mom? I was eight years old. And she was sick, or was this sudden, or? She was sick. She was in and out of the hospital all of, often. Mm -hmm. She had dialysis, had kidney problems. Mm -hmm. So I visited the hospital often. I hated it, absolutely mm -hmm. hated it. But I felt like, you know, this was, it, it was happening, and I, I couldn't help it. So, but that big loss in my life really made me question God. From the beginning absolutely so when you start questioning god as a child you start to think who is this guy who yeah. am i praying to like, and what why is this would we have this experience right. as a kid like i don't deserve this why me usually the question is why me why did i deserve this yeah and all the other I kids get to have their mom yes. why don't i get to have mine a lot of a lot of um a lot of resentment towards god mm -hmm. and and then Eventually, I learned that you know things that, that God does is inevitable. You know, there's there's times that we do have to accept what is and continue to move forward, and that's what made me strong as a person. You know, in school they used to they bull, they still bully people to this day. You know, hey, you don't have that, you don't have mom, and it's mean, it's horrible. But at the same time, you know, children they don't understand the value of having that having that. You know, and, I, and it also taught me a lot. When I saw children misbehaving or not telling, you know, not paying attention with their parents, it's like, you know what? I wish I had lucky, a mom. yeah, right. lucky to even have yes. one still here. Yes. Do you still feel her presence around? Have you oh, felt yes. her periodically through the years? Yes. Has it happened more since you were close to death, and that sort of shifted you and your spirituality, or is it kind of always happened? Like, because I would say, did you come closer to God in that moment? Not in that moment. Actually, in that moment, I had a lot of more questions because I felt like, you know, in any given time, someone can just take my life from me and that's it. My oh, life, I'm done. it was someone, some things, a car, a, yes. a lightning, a, I mean, anything. Yes. We, we, that's why I, like, preach in my household so strongly, like, live each day as you want yes. live each moment yes. appreciate each other love each other because at any moment this is like one of my practices that i do like for myself is to remind myself every day that i'm gonna die it's fragile. every day yes. i remind myself like if i get upset or pissed off about something that's like stupid you yes. know how we do Penny. <laughs> like, you know, we yeah like like, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, okay, now if I died tomorrow, would I be mad that I was mad right. about something so yes. stupid? Yes. And so that's like really how I, and I hope to God I don't ever have to go through yes. one near death experience to like come closer to living life. Right. Because I don't want to. Right. <laughs> like, no, absolutely. I, I don't sure. want to. <laughs> Um, but I know that there are so many people that have, and it's changed their life in like uh, a way that can't even be described. So um, going back to your mom, you feel her and have felt her through. Because how old yes. are you? 30? I'm, I'm 34. 34. And ironically, the the when I grieved her for, for a very long time, so many years, yeah. I realized I started to look into spirituality. Like in 2015, I, I said that was the year that I started to really do some research on, on numerology, on angels, mm -hmm. on things like that. Mm -hmm. And I started to connect the dots. And every time I saw something, especially if it was 11-11, for example, her birthday's November 11th. So, uh, oh, yes. I just got chills. Yes. Wow. So I feel That's like, like my favorite, favorite like, Spirit number 1111. Yes. <laughs> so things like that, little yeah. minor things. And I also, when I got into photography, yeah. um, I started to take pictures of things, of just the sky, you know, flowers, insects. Mm -hmm. And I, then I started to observe the world through a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And so with this, in the sky, she would, she would, I saw a heart on my birthday. Wow. That was my first indication yeah. that yes, photography was, was it, like that yeah. was, to go for it that was a message mm -hmm. from her like you know i'm here i've never left like keep keep focusing on you mm -hmm. because i had my doubts you know when i started i was like you know hey there's so many photographers what am i gonna do 
you know, I don't know how to start a business. I don't know how to do this. Mm -hmm. And those thoughts started to circleize and yeah. then the ego. Yes. Yeah. But then I, I, I feel her presence every time she, like, as soon as I start to tell myself the opposite, I know it's, it's, it's her some way trying to communicate. Yeah. So I, and the hearts, I see them everywhere. It's, it's weird. Did I, she like <laughs> rad too? Huh? Did she like rad? Um, or was it just hearts? It was just hearts. Like this, I would see hearts everywhere. I would see hearts in the sky. I would see them in the sea. I'd see them wow. randomly. I, I record it all the time. And wow. the time I see them, and I'm like, oh, there she goes again. Yeah. Because I, I feel like that's that's her way of saying, you know, or God, you know, saying I love you. I'm still. I'm always gonna be here. Mm -hmm. And that's I learned with that experience and with dealing with death in general that the spirit doesn't really go anywhere like we do suffer the loss of the person because we can't physically be there hug them love them talk to them that's a, a, a human attachment that's mm -hmm. really hard it's the hardest thing that a mm -hmm. human has to go through because we fall in love with that absolutely you know we, we become addicted to that we become mm -hmm. dependent on physical you know, yeah. presence but we have to learn how to I guess we have to learn how to recognize their spiritual presence in the world so that way we minimize yeah. the suffering a hundred percent and you're still yeah. gonna grieve because that's the human experience oh, yeah. oh, like yeah. you're still gonna grieve but that veil and that veil is sometimes so thin that it's Yes. Unbelievable. Um, I was doing, for those of you who don't know, I do intuitive readings and things for people. Um, and I was do, so I had, this was a few years ago. I had actually stopped doing readings for a bit after this because I was like, yeah, no, don't want that happening to me. Like, mm -mm, leave it at the door. Yes. So I was sitting there and I had come from like my spa job and I was at home. I knew I had a reading at like, I don't know, 8 p.m. or whatever. I come from my spa job, I was having like a snack, just sort of meditating and getting ready because I had a phone reading and um, this male voice imprint, like something was like, you're ready to talk to my mom and tell her that I didn't mean to and I'm sorry and that I didn't mean to, it was an accident, I did a stupid boy thing and I was like, happens again and I'm like, okay and so I... I called the lady, or she called me, I can't remember how we had it set up, and he kept on the whole reading, and we're talking about gardening, and art, and this, and that, and I'm like, oh my god, I have to ask this lady, like, if she, if she has a son, I remember, I'm like, my voice was, like, shaking, because I do, like, oracle cards and things like that, I don't really do mediumship, it's never been my interest, like, whatever, mm -hmm. so he's yelling in my ear, my ear's basically on fire, and I finally gathered the courage to say to her, do you or did you have a son? And she burst into tears and she said, yes, I knew he was going to come to you. And I said, okay, I said, he's telling me that he didn't mean to, that it was an accident. And then she started crying even more. And she said that he was in the army, he was 22 years old, and that he, that they had found him in his bed, passed away, and that they told her that it was suicide. And she said, I knew it wasn't suicide. And it, it was years later when she talked to me, so I was able to give her that message that he didn't mean to. I got the idea that it was maybe pills and alcohol or maybe like a combination yeah. of both. I yeah. don't really know what it was. Yes. But she was able to take that information from me, just a conduit. Yes. As a, and that's what we are. Part of this universe is always communicating with one another. So at some point we have, certain people have the intuition or the ability to tune in and mm -hmm. see where does that communication need to happen. For that woman, it, 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 I can imagine, I mean, I can imagine, as your son, you know, someone saying that they killed themselves and yeah. not knowing why would they do yeah. such a thing. Right. And so that that is a purpose. He was an adamant. Like, I did not. It was an accident. I didn't mean to. I did a stupid boy thing. So to me, maybe he took too many pills too or too maybe he drank too much. I don't really know what happened. But it was an accident. So, um... Do you believe that you're the indigenous lady? Have you seen her anymore? The one that you saw in your near death? Have I haven't. You, no. you haven't. So just in that 
Yes, in that experience. What do you think that she, why do you think she showed up as the one, because there were several, there was why several. do you think she showed up as the most? I think she showed up as the last, I believe, because, and it stood out to me the most because I felt like there was some purpose tied up to it. Like there was some type of lead. In this life. In this life. I agree with you. That I needed to either observe or take a look at or, and they were all, the funny thing is, like the most beautiful thing is that they were all different colored people. Like they're, when the pictures kept flashing by, I saw the indigenous one, but I also saw a Spaniard, I saw an African, I saw, mm -hmm. there was so many different, I, I believe that either there were my past lives or my ancestors that I've connected to. Yeah. That way either, you know, sometimes I believe that they're also still guiding you while you're in this path. Like there's there's a lot of ancient wisdom that, that comes with that. Yeah. And so, but they guide you to go back and read, you know, go back and research. So yeah. that when after I saw her and after I started to research um, my, my lineage and, you know, just shamanism and things like that, I started to understand the different tools that spirituality has and mm -hmm. so in addition to my past upbringings with christianity it all made sense after that that's when i was thrown into that awakening experience does part of you think so the shaman stuff deeply resonates with me because i have studied with a shaman for a long time that is a person who helped me get through deep childhood trauma do you think that because she was shaman like that that is a path that you are supposed to walk possibly in this lifetime do you feel an inner medicine woman and do you feel I've always it's funny because i, I do always said that like yeah. you know, my grandmother used to say used to say you know this she's the doctor because i always used to have a book in my hands and i was constantly telling people you know what to do how to resolve their problems and yeah. health issues yeah um but i feel like that also comes with an empathic spirit. So not always an empath is going to be a healer, you know, in certain energy work, for example. There's different tools. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm just a more sensitive or more, I feel more than a lot of people do. Absolutely. So that that's a gift and a curse at the same time. A hundred percent. Those that know. <laughs> yeah. The gift and the curse is yeah. when you feel so much, you feel deeply and that can you know, you can feel sorrow, you can feel happiness, and you can choose that, make that choice. But now I'm more aware of when I'm making those choices. Is it benefiting me? Is it, what is the lesson behind these things? Because that's what we're really ultimately here for. Yep. To learn. To yep. learn how to love one another. To learn how to coexist. To learn how to spiritually, when we're done with this journey, to peacefully go and live with, you know, I don't know, maybe live in a different life. Mm -hmm. Ooh, different realm, right. different plane of existence. We don't know. <laughs> like, we don't know. <laughs> because, like you said, you know, yeah. some people experience their family members coming to get them. I think mm -hmm. that at some point, that person may have a different spiritual journey. Like, I feel like this life is one journey, but death is another journey. Mm -hmm. So that we don't know what journey may that be, how long it may take, but that that's we're basically walking on what we're going to do tomorrow, so we don't know what's gonna to happen tomorrow. So always live today as if it was your last and smile and laugh. That's I've learned to appreciate life so much more after this experience because it's just in a snap. Oh, in a snap. Good. We're lucky for every single breath that yes. we breathe and every every morning that we wake up, even if we're quarantined in our house and you know can't go anywhere. Like, it's still, like, a blessing to just wake up. And because, so, I don't know if you know anything about what, so in all of my spiritual studies, I have read over and over and over again that we all choose to come here. Yes. We choose to come here and we choose to have this human experience because what a great life to be able to come into, like, this beautiful earthly realm where we have green grass and oceans and beautiful trees and plants and flowers and we have the ability of free will yes. that we can get up every day and do what we want to do yes. so we don't have to do anything we make a choice every day to get up and that is a huge huge 
blessing and thing that we think that we should be grateful for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, do you have a sense of urgency since this happened? Like, okay, like I now see that it can all end so quickly. I got to live my life. <laughs> My equipment was stolen. 
So I wasn't working at the time. Right. I wasn't doing any type of creative work at the mm-hmm. time. I was actually in a really depressive state because when you don't create or when your mind is not doing what it wants, it, it starts to consume itself. Absolutely. And I was consuming myself and I was looking for an outlet now. Somehow this you stumbled upon, like you stumbled stumbled upon, upon all of us. This, yes, stumbled upon all of them. Yeah. And gave me all that positive energy. Yeah. From that day forward, I started to dissipate. I started to detach from that situation. I had got fired from my from that job mm-hmm. that I was at. I do medical billing. Um, I was doing customer service, so working on the phone every day. And being an empath, it's very challenging because mm-hmm. you have people that you know that are being lied to, cheated to, and, and oh, yes. they're being destroyed with this healthcare situation, and they call, and they're absolutely Oh, upset. like fighting with the oh, insurance. Yeah. Oh, yes, my mom goes through that, like, can't even get her medicine because of all the BS. It's like a, some BS. It's <laughs> really a lot of BS going on yeah. that, you know, I, we, uh, we have the responsibility as healers and as conscious people to spread the word, to give that message. To deliver what it is that they need to hear, and maybe it's just the having the faith in the mustard seed, just giving that person a little bit of hope, a little bit yep. of understanding. Yep. I've been posting a lot on my page. A lot of people disagree with what I posted because I'm basically saying the same thing. You know, we cannot avoid this entire situation by just staying home and. Like we have to be go outside. The vitamin B is, is necessary for us. We are Integral. creatures that we we need to be outside mm-hmm. in the sunlight. You can't just keep people at home. And there's people that are home that are quarantined that got sick. Mm-hmm. So you know it's it's a catch twenty two there. I don't. I just think that we're not far enough into the situation to know mm-hmm. how to how to move forward. But hopefully we can. You know mm-hmm. everybody that's listening, that's watching, that has that calling that can start to research and understand mm-hmm. this is what we're called to do. A lot of people are not gonna be understanding, they're not gonna welcome you, mm-hmm. but- I you always know, hashtag, hashtag, I don't know if you guys have ever seen, but I always hashtag yes. Corona create creatives. Yes. <laughs> because I'm like using this time, I mean, I got fired from my job along with every, with, you know, 80% of people and 90% of people, yes. but I, I again, What a blessing, because I was seeing so much deception, so much shady shit, so much greed, and I was like, as an empath, I was sort of like, I don't know, miserable, (laughs) but I was saying for the money. Um, So huge blessings in these things that look really bad on the outside. You just have to look for the blessings, and now I'm co-creating with Heart Centered, entrepreneurs like you and I'm like having the time of my life and uh and so I think that if we look at this time as first of all time that we needed to sit and rest we're extremely overworked extremely overstressed extremely overstimulated Mm -hmm. and we needed that reset this will be the greatest reset of our lives if we allow it to be. Yes, we look at the positive from every situation. This situation, I believe, is positive because it, it, it actually helped people to reflect. Hey, a lot of people now are actually changing their careers because of this situation. Like now, I've got chills. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of, uh, of changes that are that comes with this, mm-hmm. and, and there's a positive change with that. Mm-hmm. Even myself, um, I was also fired from my job. So um, I actually started to think, hey, you know, maybe I should just get back into art therapy, doing more photography, Mm -hmm. videos. Photography is just where I connect with people the most. Mm -hmm. And so spiritually, I feel like I always have something to say to that person when I'm doing a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. So you get like messages. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. And then, you know, it's it's like I'm holding the mirror that you can't see because, you know, a lot of people can take a selfie and it's all great but then there's moments that you want to capture so my photography is more candid it's it's more um family oriented so when i go to birthdays i go to weddings i go to events i don't want people to look at me like i don't even want people to know that i'm there i'm just there to capture that emotion and that moment when it happens Mm -hmm. so it's hard because people are
are so self-conscious now. They see the camera and they're like, hey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I gotta so, do it for the gram. Right. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not yeah. trying to use it. You wanna catch, yes. yes. You wanna catch the authentic. Yes, authenticity. Yeah. And those, the, that that really, it, 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 it's a value to me that it's, I've been taught from a child. We used to have suitcases full of pictures, mm -hmm. Polaroids. And so we'll sit there and go over those and just look at those memories. And I feel like that's something that I'd love to bring back to, to families, you know, just having the ability to sit down and look at your photos and say, oh my God, I remember when on, I was laughing at this joke. On real, that. not just on a cell phone, on right. real felt, not on a film, real paper. paper. Yeah, paper. Yeah, you know, because uh, photographs are meant to be felt. A hundred percent. I'm always like so sad because I'm like, I have no pictures printed out. They're all on Google Photos. I'm always so sad. And I'm always worried. What if they decided to just eliminate all those pictures? Oh, oh God, I would, that is, I'm going to throw up even thinking about it. I would be so worried. So yeah. I, I've developed a system, a strategy where, you know, I come to your event, party, um, I, or fam like a birthday. And she has also done funerals. Yes. Let me explain that part. <laughs> I was like, wait, you did what? I was like, that's yes. a special, like, sacred space to be invited yes. into. You have to be a very special person to get invited to take yes. a picture. So, you know, um, my people. first experience doing that, we were actually doing a party away of someone who had passed away suddenly. Um, her name was Carol, and may she rest in peace. Mm -hmm. She just suddenly passed away from a heart attack, and she that's asked, how you go. Yeah, she asked to be cremated. Yeah, um, and she was from Clearwater, so we were going to spread the ashes through the Clearwater Court of Campbell Causeway. Okay. So the family gathered together. They did a special prayer, and I was just taking pictures behind the scenes. But when the helicopter started spreading the ashes. Um, the sky, the clouds, they started baking like these formations and I did get a C from that. No! Yes. Did you? I on did. your photography? I did. It's no! On my Facebook. Yeah, you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, body is covered in <laughs> And so when those pictures came back and when it comes on to my memories again, when some not necessarily people see the sadness of that moment, they mm -hmm. see the moment where she parted peacefully. And, mm -hmm. I, and I see where, you know, the kids, we were take, I took pictures of the children just with the flowers together and just, you know, that togetherness is what really matters in that time. And funerals are very tough. I don't really get invited to the funerals where there's a lot of grieving and pain. I know a lot of people are sensitive to that in my culture. But I am open to uh, to doing those events for people because mm -hmm. you can hold the space for yes, it. Not everybody can hold the space yes. for that. I can hold the space for in that type of environment as well. And some of my best friends always say to me, like, that is so strange that you do well in those situations. And I'm like, I mean, I just, I, again, I think there's a medicine woman that lives yes. on the inside of me. Yes. I always have. Yes. I've always felt. And she ain't white. Yes. Like, <laughs> And it's a really strange, you know, thing when you're able to hold space for people. Yes. But what a huge blessing. And for you to be able to actually capture, capture it on film or paper or whatever yes. it may be. Like, I mean, that's huge. I cannot believe that you caught a C in the cloud. You guys send me that picture. I'm going to send you the picture <laughs> of the heart and the C. Because wow. the heart is like, that's one of my first pictures of the sky. I've always had an obsession with the skies, mm -hmm. but also with light pictures. Anything mm -hmm. that has, it, photography is basically painting with light. Okay. Um, and, and I feel that there is a very thin line between like the darkness and the light. You can see the beauty within that. Like I've compared that a lot with spirituality because mm -hmm. when you see life through different lenses, you get different perspectives, but they all come to the same beautiful picture. Right. So that has shown me when I've done these events, you know, it, it, it does show me the, the attachment to, to the material things, but also to the emotion. You know, right. when, when we're going through grieving, we're, we're going through some emotions there. But for you to go back and see that, sometimes it's like, wow, how far I've come. Like, I, you know, you caught me when I was in a really, really yeah. bad moment. Yeah. And then they look forward, you look back to yourself, and you're like, wow, I've, I'm really resilient really a strong right. person so i've had those reactions those reactions will keep me going definitely besides those reactions because i love when they stay 
I don't smile. I don't like taking pictures. Uh, 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 oh my god. Yeah. You know? I yeah. love those. Those are my favorite. Yeah. You know, because you can bring it out in them. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yes. Anything else that you want to um, like leave people with? What do you want to leave people with? What do you want to change in your little part of the world, or do you want to change anything? Um, what would you want to leave people with on your last day? I definitely want to leave people with the idea that love is not what we all think sometimes love takes pain, takes a lot of suffering, and that despite all of that, we all have to come together and love one another. That's mm -hmm. all that that's all we're here for. Bottom line. Bottom line. We we're yeah. not here if we hate we choose hate over love, we're always gonna have that karma. Mm -hmm. So the best thing to do is to always choose to be kind mm -hmm. and loving, and it'll reciprocate. Mm -hmm. And as my shirt says, you know, I love your shirt. Yeah. Right? Did you get that locally here? Where I got this at it? Spencer's. Actually. Oh, so fun! I love Spencer's. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me all. <laughs> Takes me back to the nineties. <laughs> yes. Hot topic. I'm that type. I'm that type. Okay, where can people find you at? Uh, Instagram, yes. social media, Facebook, the whole yes. thing. Yes, Instagram, I am Thai Photos. Facebook, Forever Photography and Events by Taisha. And you can always see me around with my camera because I, I always have my baby with me. And I take pictures of everything. So even if you're not looking or smiling, I've probably taken a picture of you. Yeah. And like I said, it's, it's all love and it's all happiness when you actually are able to appreciate that so yeah. I hope that everyone at some point would just love to take their picture yeah that that is your your, your pictures are your love language yes. and your um, sort of legacy in the world uh, thank you guys for watching I'll link you to all of Taisha's social media so that you can find her thank you guys for watching connected this is Chrissy Bain we'll see you next time